Hello everybody, welcome to the Institute. In this one we're going to look at number six. Number six was this situation where you had a person that was pulling on a 10 kilogram crate and it says with a horizontal force of 30 newtons, so this is one force acting on it, and it wants you to figure out um, what is the magnitude of the friction force acting on the crate? So if I go through and put all my forces in, we know we're going to have a friction force acting. So that's going to be opposing this, something like that. We would have some kind of normal force acting upward. And then we're going to have some kind of weight acting or force of gravity acting downward. Now the force of gravity is just m times g. That's what we sometimes call the weight. So this would just be 10 times 9.8. So my silly little mnemonic for remembering the force of gravity is the weight. Take mass times 9.8, weight and eight rhyme. So this would be 98 newtons. Since they're pulling horizontally, the normal force would just equal that force of gravity in magnitude. So it would also be 98 newtons. So that's good. To information to know. Then for our friction force over here, most people are like, hey, let's jump to the fun equation. So friction force is equal to mu times the normal force. This is our fun equation. But we've got two different mu's. They give us the coefficient of static friction, 0.36, and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.15. So the question is, which one do I use? Well, here is the idea. Friction is or static friction is a smart force, is the way I kind of describe it. And so it always builds up to some maximum. So in other words, I'm going to modify this equation a little bit. Um, this is for finding friction force, like a, a magnitude if you know that it's moving or it's starting to move. But we actually kind of simplify our static friction. And we talk about the maximum value. This is what we are doing in our lab is actually equal. It's either equal to or it's less than the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So in other words, if I put this in to the equation with my normal force and I try to find what the maximum static friction is where it's equal, so max is going to happen when it's equal, other ones are going to happen when it's not. So if I get rid of the word max up here, my static friction is either less than or equal to this magnitude. So what we do is we look at see if we can even get this object to start moving. So if this 30 newtons up here is enough to start it moving. If it is, then we're going to bounce to kinetic friction. And then we'll just use this equation with kinetic friction. So you have to actually kind of calculate both and then compare it to this 30 newtons. So if I pull on this object with just say one newton of force, I know it's not going to move. That's not enough to overcome static friction or the maximum static friction or the starting friction. If I pulled with two, I probably am still not going to do it, but eventually I'm going to get to a point where it's going to start. So think about our graph. Uh, if you remember from our lab, we had a force versus time graph. It started out here at zero, so let's draw this in green, and then it kind of built up, and then boom, it started to move, and then it kind of did this. So this was our maximum static friction, but technically all of this is static friction. So it depends on how much you're pulling with. If it's not starting to move, it's gonna use Newton's third law and apply an equal and opposite force. So that's a little bit of help on number six.